Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So we are gonna be talking about Minnesota biomes and we'll be talking about this for the next two days. This video is gonna be fairly short, just kind of introduction to what you'll be working on. So we already went over the nine biomes that we are going to talk about. Remember from the reading that the way people separate biomes may be different. So for this reason, if you Google biome types, you may find a list with just five biomes or a list of 20 biomes. So sometimes they differ in how specific people wanna describe them. For that case, because we're just short on time, um, we'll just be talking about these nine biomes right there. Now, also it's kind of confusing because Minnesota is right here, that's temperate forest biome. But as you will see, Minnesota, when we get into that specific list of biomes, we actually have four biomes in our state. And that's because there's vastly different organisms that are living in those biomes. So we wanna make sure that we label them differently. So we have tall grass aspen parkland, which is the small part here. Now also know too that this is just our state, but obviously if we looked at a bigger map, this continues into Canada too. So it's not like it just is a hard line and the trees stop here, it continues on. This biggest biggest biome here in Minnesota is the coniferous forest. And we have connecting to it, the deciduous forest. And then this kind of a L shape here is the prairie grassland. So all of these biomes, mention basically what grows there, uh, what kind of organisms live there. And for the most part, they're land biomes, right? But we know that we have a lot of water in Minnesota. So where's the water? How are we gonna mention it when we're talking about these biomes? Well, the climate and temperature influence what organisms are found in each biome. And obviously our climate is influenced by all the lakes, rivers, streams, and wetlands um, through the water cycle, right? So they all have an influence in the climate, which then influences what organisms are, organisms are found. Um, and again, the organisms that are found in the biomes really influence the names of these different biomes. Primarily when biologists were picking names for the biomes of Minnesota, they're looking at what kind of trees, what kind of plants grow there, and that's how they name them. So it's not that it's water is forgotten, it's just, it's there, it's not in the names, but it's a part of the landscape. Something that's also important to mention when we learn about Minnesota biomes is it changes as human use of the land changes. So we're talking about what it's looked like for years and years and years and years. Most notably prairie grassland, a huge part of our state used to be prairie, and now, unfortunately, you don't see a whole lot of prairie. So the land use has changed, whether that is through development, like houses or businesses, roads, that kind of thing, or agriculture. A lot of times the soil in prairie grasslands is super rich and super nutrient, so it's really good for growing crops. So as a result, you may see less grassland. So this is a very general picture of our state. We know that, especially towards the cities, it's not just filled with deciduous forests, right? So that's something to consider. I still think it's important to learn about the biomes because there's so much we don't know, or you may know, but I sure didn't when I was looking at some of these videos about our state and the vast differences of the environment in which we're surrounded by. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna explore our state's biomes. So in our folder um, for today, and you'll see that it extends to tomorrow, you'll see a link that says Minnesota Biomes. That's step one, you're gonna click on that link and I'll show you what that looks like. There are going to be icons to learn more about each biome. And then we have 
questions called Minnesota My Own Questions that you will have today and tomorrow to answer. So this is what the Minnesota Biomes link looks like. So when you click on that link, this is what should pop up. So each of these green dots will have the major biome names, deciduous forest, coniferous forest, tall grass, aspen, parkland, and prairie grassland. So there's something really to do with these, um, but you'll notice that they have all of these other icons within the boundaries of that biome. And then you have this little icon right here. So if you click on this biome comparison chart, there'll be always blue buttons here that you have to click that'll just take you to another link. So this page actually gives you a comparison chart of all of our different biomes. Um, and it has some information that's interesting to look at, but obviously you don't have to look at this whole website. You can just look at this chart. So let's go back. So let's say I wanted to learn more about mm, the tall grass aspen parkland. There is a reading, just a very short reading, that describes how this biome is different than the other biomes. Each biome has that, so it looks like a book. Just again, the short reading. And if it's easier for you, I changed some of the wording, so and I kind of ed, uh, omitted some of the stuff that you don't really need to know for this class. But if you want to see the full reading, you just click on the link and you see the website there. It's not whatever is easier for you. So there you'll find the readings give you a, you know a nice description, and then there's actually videos that pertain to the biomes too. Um, so for example, how beavers build dams. Obviously, beavers just don't exist in this one biome. They can be found in other parts of the state too, but they're just more prevalent in this biome. So keep that in mind too. These lines they kind of blend a little bit better than what we have to show you to you know depict that there is a boundary. I do have some food webs, um, coniferous forests and the deciduous forest food webs. And we've got kind of a cool picture of a root system there. So there's just all sorts of, of fun things. Fun might be used loosely, but there are some cool videos that I'd like you to check out too. Um, for the most part, I kept the videos fairly short, like under five minutes. But there is one video, I think. Let's see. Let's see this one. Nope. This one? Yes. So the Jay Cook State Park, for some of these videos, I did add some more words here. You don't have to watch this whole thing because I think it's like 15 minutes. But it's just a video of someone walking through Jay Cook State Park, which if, if you haven't been there, it's really cool. Um, and then this video down here, the 360 view of deciduous forests. It's a short video, but it's filmed with a 360 degree camera. So you can actually, and I'm just going to mute this guy, you can actually go full screen and look around. I wish there was more of these videos because it's kind of cool. But, you know, if you're feeling like you're just sick of being stuck inside, you take just like a little virtual tour. So that's what those links are for the most part. I won't go into everything just so you got you guys can spend some time to look into it. Um, and then there's going to be some questions that have to relate to the videos, the reading, the food webs and things like that. So that is it. If you have questions, please let me know, um, especially in this kind of assignment, because it's a little bit different than what we've done before. If you have a question, it's likely someone else has the same question. And then I can just kind of create a screencast showing exactly what to do or maybe giving a better explanation on something. So that is it. Um, hope you guys are doing well. And we will see you back on Monday.